Dear viewers, welcome to the YouTube channel Hexterbo Chemistry. In this video, we are going to learn the physical and chemical properties of aluminium. In the last video, we have seen the extraction process of aluminium by Bayes process and Hall's process. So, with that continuation, we are going to learn the physical and chemical properties of aluminium. Let us see the physical properties of aluminium first. It is a silvery white metal. You might have seen this aluminium metal. It is a looks like silver in color. So it's a silvery white metal. It has a low density. It has a low density 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter and it's very very light in weight. You could see when you have a, a cubic like this one centimeter height, one centimeter width, one centimeter length, the Aluminium will occupy the weight of 2.7 grams in this. So this is what the density we usually call which is very very low and which is light. It is malleable, that means we can drawn into sheets, ductile, we can drawn into wires and which has a high tensile strength, we can hold uh, much weight. Similarly, it is a good conductor of heat and electricity. You can see the aluminium wire, it's a good conductor of heat and electricity. As well as it has melting point as uh, 660 degree centigrade and its boiling point is 2467 degree centigrade. You could see the melting point and the boiling point and it can be polished to produce a shiny attractive surface. So this is a tile uh, of aluminium you could see here. So we can be polished, we can polish this and we can use it. The next we are going to learn about the chemical properties of aluminium. The first chemical property of aluminium is reaction with air. The dry air does not react with aluminium. But moist air quickly tarnishes aluminium. We know that metal plus oxygen, it means it's a burning reaction. Metal when reacts with oxygen, it forms metal oxide. Similarly, aluminium reacts with oxygen to form aluminium oxide. We do have a nitrogen in the atmosphere. In the air. So the aluminium reacts with nitrogen to form aluminium nitride too. Let us see the experiment in picture. The aluminium powder is taken in a round bottom flask like this and it's heated to around 800 degrees centigrade. You could see the aluminium brightly burns, very brightly burns, forming aluminium oxide and aluminium nitride. And uh, you could see the reaction. Aluminium plus oxygen will give you aluminium oxide. So if you balance it, we get 4 aluminium plus 3 oxygen molecules to give 2 aluminium oxides. Similarly, aluminium plus nitrogen will give you aluminium nitride. One more important point I want to discuss here is moist air quickly tarnishes aluminium because it forms a thin layer of uh, aluminium oxide. You know very well that the aluminium oxide acts as a protective, a protective layer. So it is called self-protecting metal. So once it is exposed to moist air or, or uh, uh, water vapor, what happens? It immediately reacts with that and then forms aluminium oxide layer. So this aluminium oxide layer is a passive layer. It does not react with anything. So whatever is we keep inside the aluminium layer, aluminium oxide layer act as a protective layer. So, so the aluminium oxide layer which protects the aluminium, that's the reason it is called self-protective metal, metal we call. So this is how the aluminium reacts with air. The next reaction is aluminium reacts with water. The pure water does not react with aluminium because as I told you when the water vapors come in contact with aluminium it immediately forms a thin layer of aluminium oxide which does not allow further the water to react with. This is one of the property why we are using in the utensils, cooking utensils like pressure cooker we use because once the pressure cooker is made up of aluminium when you add water to this uh, in the inner side of the wall of the aluminium, 
the small or thin coating of aluminum oxide is formed which prevents the which is actually a passive layer so the organic acid such as acetic acid or uh, malic acid it does not react with the aluminum oxide so it prevents the contact between the aluminum and organic acid so it can easily cook that is the reason so it is a main idea my dear children a pure water does not react with aluminum as the aluminum forms a thin layer called aluminum oxide whereas if you heat the aluminum to red hot red hot if you pass a steam over it steam over it what happens a metal plus steam will give you a metal oxide plus hydrogen similarly this reaction happens aluminum reacts with steam to form aluminum oxide and hydrogen so in this picture i'm going to demonstrate or explain uh, the aluminum is heated to red hot and the steam is passed to the aluminum so that the hydrogen is is uh, bubbled over uh, the test tube in the water tank through this and then and then the hydrogen is tested using the a favorite testing method that is uh, the flame goes off with the popping sound when you introduce a, a glowing wooden splinter so this is what happens so it confirms that hydrogen is evolved in this process so this is how the uh, aluminum reacts with steam so it does not reacts with water the next chemical property is reaction with alkali normally the higher uh, reactive metals usually reacts in the reacts with alkali especially in the case of aluminum dissolves in the alkali somewhat we can say caustic soda sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide we call caustic potash solutions the higher concentration of sodium hydroxide is called caustic soda similarly the high concentration of uh, potassium hydroxide is called caustic potash so the aluminum dissolves in this and forms respective aluminates and with the release of hydrogen gas so when the aluminum reacts with caustic soda it forms sodium meta aluminate you could see the reaction aluminum binds with caustic soda to form sodium meta aluminate along with hydrogen if it uh, is a caustic potash we call potassium hydroxide we call potassium meta aluminate will be the product you could see the picture demonstrate this uh, reaction so here the aluminum is taken in a conical flask along with the caustic soda you could see the immediately reaction starts the hydrogen starts forming here you could see the bubbles the last final product is sodium meta aluminate which is soluble in this water and then the hydrogen gas is bubbled to check the hydrogen the famous uh, uh, familiar experiment we can do if you introduce a glowing wooden splinter the flame goes off with a pop sound that's what it confirms the hydrogen evolution from this reaction the next one that is a reaction with hydrochloric acid we know that metal usually reacts with the uh, acids to give salt plus hydrogen so very similarly the, the aluminum reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid and condensate hydrochloric acid the very uh, very small differences if you use dilute hydrochloric acid the reaction will be slower whereas when you use a condensate hydrochloric acid rapidly reacts with aluminum but the product is same when aluminum reacts with hydrochloric acid it forms aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas you could see here aluminum is taken in the hydrochloric acid you could see the lot of bubbles is generated along with aluminum chloride so aluminum chloride is here lot of hydrogen bubbles are produced by this reaction so al plus hydrochloric acid will give you alcl3 plus hydrogen gas so this is the uh, reaction and normally takes place as per the standard formula the next one it is a reaction with dilute and concentrated sulfuric acid that is having a slight difference when you react with dilute sulfuric acid it, you know, aluminum reacts very slowly forms as per this metal plus acid will give you salt plus hydrogen aluminum is a metal as it is dilute sulfuric acid so you get respective salt that is aluminum sulfate and hydrogen gas you could see here the aluminum is taken in the form of a ribbon and in dissolved in the dilute sulfuric acid slowly you could see the bubbles 
if it's in the bubbles, your hydrogen gas is coming out. The reaction, if you want to see, the Al plus H2SO4 will give you Al2SO4 SO4 thrice plus hydrogen gas. This is how it reacts with dilute sulfuric acid. Come to the concentrated sulfuric acid. So when the aluminium is dissolved or the aluminium reacts with the concentrated sulfuric acid like this, it, the reaction will be very rapid. When you add aluminium to the sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, the reaction is immediate and then it forms aluminium sulfate along with the evaluation of sulfur dioxide gas. If you use dilute sulfuric acid, you get hydrogen gas, whereas if you use concentrated sulfuric acid, you will get sulfur dioxide gas as a product. The equation is aluminium plus H2SO4 will give you Al2SO4 thrice plus sulfur dioxide and water. So this is the product to be formed in this reaction. The next reaction. Reaction with concentrated nitric acids. If I want to say this, nitric acid is a wonderful oxidizing agent. So when aluminium reacts with nitrogen, nitric acid, when the aluminium reacts with nitric acid, the nitric acid oxidizes the aluminium to form aluminium oxide. So what happens? A dilute concentrated nitric acid does not attack aluminium because the nitric acid is an oxidizing agent. It provides oxygen and it combines with aluminium to form aluminium oxide which layer is a passive layer. So this is a very productive layer, I told you. So this is the reason the aluminium containers are used to transport the concentrated nitric acid and dilute nitric acids. So this is one of the famous questions asked in this uh, uh, area. Why do concentrated nitric acid can be transported in aluminium containers? The answer is this. The concentrated nitric acid can be stored and transported in the aluminium container as it is reacts with aluminium to form a thin protective oxide layer on the aluminium surface. So the aluminium surface, inner wall of the aluminium surface, we have aluminium oxide. So this oxide layer renders aluminium passive. So once it is formed, the nitric acid does not come in contact with aluminium so that it doesn't react, I can say, and then we can easily transport the nitric acid because of this productive aluminium layer. The next very important uh, two mark question is aluminothermic process. It is uh, usually you might have seen in the welding rod. Very simple, we can use the uh, for joining the iron pipes or iron rods. How it is used? Because here the aluminium acts as a strong reducing agent. It is a very important one mark too. So kindly go through this. It will be very very uh, easy and interesting one. So you might have seen this rod. This rod is a mixture of two substances that is a, a powder of uh, iron oxide and uh, the aluminium so these two are mixed together to form this rod so this is how they will heat to uh, join the uh, two iron pipes so how they do it we will see actually uh, in the reactivity series uh, aluminium is on top when compared to iron right so the aluminium can displace iron from its compound so that's how it is used one more information I will tell you, the aluminium actually removes oxygen from the ions, uh, uh, iron uh, oxide. So I can say aluminium is oxidized, you can see once the aluminium and the iron oxide reacts it forms aluminium oxide. So addition of oxygen takes place, so here it is oxidation takes place, right. The substance which undergo oxidation is actually a reducing agent, so here the aluminium acts as a reducing agent, whereas on the other hand the ferrous oxide right here iron gives oxygen to aluminium right or does it provides oxygen to aluminium i can say it is an oxidizing agent right it provides oxygen whereas it removes oxygen so that is what you have to understand so here aluminium is a strong reducing agent it's reducing agent and when electric current is supplied the high amount of heat is generated very bright light you can see like this so in this all these uh, two substances melt so that the aluminium immediately combines or, or uh, replaces the iron from iron oxide to form aluminium oxide leaving the iron so with the high temperature iron melts so that the two rods can be easily joined it, this reaction produces a lot of heat you could see that's why they use a specially designed glass black glass to uh, reduce the radiation right now, what happens actually? We will see. The reduction of oxide by aluminium is called Goldsmith aluminothermic process. 
So the name of the scientist who discovered this Goldsmith, the reason it's called Goldsmith Aluminothermic Process. But due to strong affinity for aluminium, right, it can be reduced in metal oxides like iron oxide, chromium oxide to corresponding metals. If it is iron oxide, it will reduce to metal, so reduce to iron. If it is chromium oxide, it reduce to chromium because on the reactivity series, aluminium tops when compared to the uh, um, iron and chromium. Thus, in the aluminothermic process, aluminium acts as a strong reducing agent. It's a powerful reducing agent. When the mixture of aluminium powder and iron oxide is ignited like this, the later is reduced to metal. The iron oxide is reduced to iron. This process is called aluminothermic process. We have here in the name of welding, right? I hope uh, this uh, uh, information and the physical and chemical properties of aluminium will be very useful to you. And if you learn these uh, processes or uh, properties, uh, or which very helpful in your examination too. I hope you will like this video. If you uh, if you like, you can uh, subscribe and click the bell button to get the notification instantly. Like and share. Comment if you have any doubts. Thank you so much, my dear children.